Matt Hardy, back with TNA. He's coming back for the New York City tapings. And uh, on Twitter, I saw Bully Ray was teasing a possible Hardys versus Dudley's match, which would actually be a pretty cool attraction, I think, for them to give the fans. Those two teams made the table match famous in WWE at the uh, Royal Rumble in Madison Square Garden, which is just in the shadows. It's like a block away from the Manhattan Center where they're going to be this week. That does not seem to bode well for Matt's future in Ring of Honor. He is actually wrestling on the ROH pay-per-view tonight, teaming with Mike Bennett against the Briscoes. Uh, According to this week's uh, Observer, what happened was TNA came to Matt and said, listen, we're going to pay you X amount of money. We want you back for the New York tapings. He turned him down. And they came back to him a second time with substantially uh, more money, and he accepted the offer. So, apparently, they have the money to give to Matt Hardy, but not AJ Styles, or Daniels, or any number of homegrown guys that they've had. That's good to know. But, they're doing what they can, it seems, to load up these these New York shows, which they have to. They absolutely have to. Uh, You know, they're bringing back the six-sided ring. That's my guess. My guess is the six-sided ring is going to come back. I'd be stunned if four sides actually won the vote. Even Dixie Carter was on Twitter a few days ago and basically said the same thing. She said that's six sides was dominating four sides was getting crushed so unless there's a big swing in the vote my guess is that they're going to have the six-sided ring in new york uh they're reuniting the hardys which hopefully means the end of willow i know they've also announced a a title match between lashley and jeff hardy for the first tapings on wednesday so hopefully that's yet another sign that willow is no more uh they're bringing in the great muda For one of the tapings this week, they're making another one of the tapings. I think the one on Thursday is going to be an all-X Division show, the uh, the Destination X show. Uh, I want to say it's on Thursday. Brian Blade and I are going to the third taping on Friday, so we kind of feel left out here. Hopefully they'll save something special for us. Uh, All of this brings us to Impact this past Thursday. The first batch of tapings coming off the worst collection of tapings in the history of wrestling, and the first tapings outside the Impact Zone in Orlando in quite some time. Uh, They will not be back there for at least several months, so they were on the road this week in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Far from a packed house, but definitely a livelier crowd than we have seen for Impact in a long time, and it helped the show. It was not the reason that the show was good. The show was actually an improvement over a lot of those recent shows, but the crowd certainly helped out a lot more. Okay, but I don't want to hear, well, see, that's a perfect example of what, you know, Russo was saying in his blog about how it's all about the crowd, and if the crowd is hot, then the show is hot. That's not true. You could still have a shitty show with a hot crowd. This was not a shitty show. They had a hot crowd, and the show itself was a hell of a lot better than the last, I don't know, four or five episodes of Impact, probably, maybe more. It was a big improvement over those recent shows, which isn't saying much, but still. Impact also did its uh, best number in over two months. So hopefully we can look back months from now and just forget those last four or five shows ever happened. (laughs) That's my hope. The pros. We have a new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. His name is Bobby Lashley. Or just Lashley. I think they may have shaved his first name off. The uh, Eric Young reign has come to an end. We no longer have a bearded champion in either promotion, which is very sad. But it was a necessary change. I like Eric Young, but not his world champion. It just was not working. You know, when the champion is wrestling in main events every single week, and those segments are doing some of the lowest numbers on the show week after week, I mean, MVP and Eric Young, which was supposed to be the main event of this pay-per-view last week, and they had two matches on television, and the most recent match they had, I think they lost like fifty or 60,000 viewers. How does that happen? How does something like that even happen? So it wasn't working. It's not a good sign when that happens. You know, Lashley is another former WWE guy, yes. But you know what? Now they can build to putting the belt back on either Samoa Joe or Bobby Roode. Two TNA originals who are over with the fans and who deserve another shot with the title. I would be fine with either one of those guys getting another title reign. That was the other big news, by the way. Bobby Roode is back. They did an angle before that last set of tapings where he was suspended. And then they taped all those shows, and he wasn't there. So it's been a while since we've seen him. Uh, After Lashley beat EY in the main event, Root hopped the guardrail in street clothes to attack the League of Extraordinary Black Gentlemen. Clearly uh, positioned now as a babyface, and I think that's the right role for him right now. They seem to be building to a Lashley versus Root match down the line. Uh, But then again, this is TNA, so it'll probably end up being a TV main event in about three weeks. Hopefully not. 
And to all the people ragging on TNA for doing the title change on Impact and not Slammiversary last Sunday, I have to defend TNA on this. Because people... It's it's very easy to bash TNA. I know I'm one to talk because I've had a lot of stuff to say about them recently. But when I say it, it comes from the perspective of why are they doing this? This is stupid. They should know better. Or why are they doing this when they should be doing this? Or what the hell is wrong with these people? I, I try to make sure that when I say something, it's either constructive or if it isn't constructive and I'm just insulting them, I probably have a pretty good reason for doing so. I don't just jump on the bash TNA bandwagon. It's a lot. It's very easy to do. I see it online. I see it on Facebook. There are a lot of people who will say things about TNA and even make me shake my head like, just shut up. There's a lot of stupid shit that people say. And one thing that I think people jumped on, and I did not, and I think it's stupid, well, my God, they, they, they put the title on Lashley on Thursday, and they had a pay-per-view last Sunday. LOL, TNA. And that's true. You know, when you have a pay-per-view, you want to save your big things normally for those shows, but TNA is different. TNA is different because you know how many people probably saw that pay-per-view last Sunday, and that's their fault. They could have done a great job of promoting that show. Okay, They have four pay-per-views a year now. They have four shows to promote. You would think those four shows would be built up like the biggest thing in the world. That is their fault. They need to do a better job of promoting these pay-per-views if, they're, if they insist on still having them. I agree. But they didn't. A lot of these matches came together at the last minute. The main event got fucked up because MVP got hurt, which was out of their hands. And I looked at that card. I mean, there were some potentially good matches, but I didn't look at that card and think, wow, what a stacked card. I looked at that and said, eh, 10,000 buys. 10,000 people, if they're lucky, probably bought that show. They have to live and die by these TV ratings now because Spike still hasn't renewed them, even though I'm pretty sure they will. But without Spike, they're dead. We've seen plenty of title changes on Raw the night after pay-per-views in the past. People seem to forget about that. I mean, not so much these days. It's actually pretty rare when we see a world title change on, on one of the free shows in WWE. But, you know, Sid beat Bret Hart for the title the night after an in-your-house pay-per-view once on Raw. Steve Austin won a couple of world titles on Raw the night after some King of the Ring shows. So of all the things to rag on TNA for, that's not one of them. I know why they did it. I have no problem with them doing it that way. Slammiversary apparently was a really good show. This was a good show. They finally built up some momentum. Of all the things to bash them for, I don't see that as being one of them. But there were cons on this show. There were pros and there were cons. And one of those cons was way too many talking segments centered around MVP. Oh my god. Enough with the talking. It's a two-hour show. He can make his point in two segments, max. I like. I did like how unhinged he seemed on this show. He was a great prick heel, MVP. This may have been his best heel performance since he came to TNA. He was screaming, he was shouting, he was bullying the timekeeper, he fired Earl Hebner. You know, just generally, he was a dick. He even stumbled over his words in the opening promo. He had, to, he had to compose himself. I didn't think, oh, botch. I thought, man, this guy's going to give himself a heart attack if he doesn't calm down. So I thought his performance was fine. They just go way, way overboard with the talking. For a promotion called Total Nonstop Action, you can't be doing that. That was always the knock on WWE and the McMahons. Too much talking. If TNA does the same thing, then why should I watch? Give me something different, and I'll watch. Give me the same exact thing, only in front of a much smaller crowd, and I've already got three hours of that shit on Mondays. That's why, you know, to go back to the ring stuff, I can appreciate them trying something different. I just think there's other ways you could be doing that. Changing the number of sides to your ring isn't going to change anything. The other thing that was glaring to me on this show was the lack of roster depth. We had Eric Young wrestling twice. We had the Wolves wrestling twice. You throw in seven MVP talking segments, and after a while, it's like, am I watching this show on Rewind? What's going on here? But that's what happens when you cut so many guys. And I know this was all part of the storyline with MVP. He was sticking it to the baby faces by putting them in multiple matches. But a lot of that has to do with the fact that they they have gotten rid of so many guys, or guys have left. Besides Matt Hardy, you know, it sounds like there could be some other familiar faces returning to TNA during those New York City tapings, like Low Key, okay, or, or Senshi, whatever they end up calling him. 
I hope so, because they need more bodies. And that was very apparent watching this show.